I would love to know what is it that's exciting you most about Australia Decides? Great question. Um, there's a million different things, to be quite honest with you, but I think just given this opportunity, being given this opportunity to get up on stage and be myself and show my artistry to my country with the thought of potentially representing my country, it's like there's just so much motivation in that in itself and it's extremely exciting and, you know, it's uh, all the other artists are amazing. You know, we get to all come together and be ourselves and, and I'm so excited to meet everyone up there as well. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it in a way of, you know, in a fun way, I get to go up there, I get to perform Eurovision, something that I've loved my whole life. So, you know, if I get the opportunity to, to represent my country, that's just amazing. But if I don't, it's still such a fantastic experience. So I think just collectively as a whole, it's just a really fantastic experience and I'm grateful to be a part of. Yeah, I think as well, obviously with the, the sort of pandemic and lockdowns and stuff over the past few years, to then have this kind of big in-person celebration of music must be quite like a euphoric feeling. Yeah, it's fantastic. And, you know, this is like, it's so good for the Australian music scene. Um, you know, just 11 artists getting up there and doing their thing. Yeah. And the European fan base is so strong and so dedicated that, you know, that they're, they're excited. They've been waiting as well. So it, there's just so much excitement built up to this one moment. And, you know, it's, it's three minutes on stage, which doesn't sound like a lot of time, but there's so much that's been going into this, so much preparation, so much excitement all built up to this one moment. So it's just really exciting that we all get to get up there, you know, in the difficult times that we are in, we get to do our thing. And, you know, it's just such an amazing feeling. And you're now part of the Eurovision family. Like it is, it's such a kind of a love for even the national finals across the world. So it's, it must be quite a special feeling to be part of that kind of family and sort of bubble. Yeah, uh, it's such an amazing feeling. Like, as I mentioned, the Eurovision fan base is just so strong. And, and I'm really seeing that with everything that I'm doing and posting online and, and the feedback that I'm getting. And I could only imagine what it would be like to actually do Eurovision. You know, if I were to win Australia Decides and, and I got this opportunity, it would just be the most mind-blowing, fantastic experience that I think anyone could ever go through. So we'll see what happens. But other than that, I'm just so excited to be in the position that I'm in right now. Brilliant. So thinking of Electrify, the kind of lyrics of that, what inspired that? So Electrify is about uh, when you meet someone in your life that just makes you feel amazing, makes you feel like you've like a new, you found a new emotion, you know, something that's really opened up, opened you up and uh, feeling like a superpower, I like to call it. I'm a huge Marvel fan and I've always uh, dreamt of having a superpower. So if that's the closest that, that someone can feel to having one, then I'll take it. So yeah, that's, right. you know, that's where Electrify kind of comes in. And I just felt like the word Electrify was the perfect way to describe a feeling that is just, you know, out of this world. You know, feeling like feeling like Thor, feeling electric. You know, yeah, um, yeah. So that's how I would describe it. So going into that kind of writing process, do you think like, okay, I'm going to go and write a Eurovision song, or do you think I'm going to write a song that is kind of it would fit nicely along my kind of previous releases? Yeah, well, I. It's interesting actually. I'm a Greek Cypriot Australian and European music is something that's been a part of my life ever since I was born. You know, it's so it's such a big part of my musical journey. And, you know, I love upbeat Euro music. I love, um, you know, ballads from Europe. And, and I just have a really big liking to uh, all the amazing languages out there. So when writing Electrify, I wanted to do something that's in the Euro pop world. Um, but also just with a flavour of Andrew, and and that's what I'm 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 proud to have come up with Electrify and to be in this position now, and you know I'm really happy with where the song you know came to. It sometimes it takes time with music, and you know, but the song kind of found itself, and you know I think it works for Eurovision. I hope it works for Eurovision. I hope that everyone loves it. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to be myself, be authentic, but also enter that Euro world. I like that, and I think. Your previous stuff has kind of had a slightly more R&B sort of uh, pop pop sort of vibe. So to go full on kind of Euro pop is quite quite a nice, refreshing new direction for you as well. Yeah. Um, 
thinking you mentioned obviously uh, Greek Cypriot heritage, um, which again, you know, further brings you to that Eurovision world. Um, the song includes Spanish. Was there ever the kind of the decision to maybe include a bit of Cypriot or, or Greek language in there? Yeah, so, um, you know, I've had this question quite a bit, you know, with uh, in context of my heritage and stuff. And I just felt that Spanish kind of called out to me for this song. I felt like it had that vibe to it. And I'm such a huge fan of the language. I just think it's a beautiful language. But coming back to to the question, my biggest dream would be to, to be able to do remixes in all different languages. You know, so I would absolutely love to do a Greek version and, you know, love to do multiple different versions of different languages. Although I'm not, I'm not fluently bilingual, I can't speak all these different languages, but I love to learn and, and listen. And, you know, I spend a lot of time sitting behind my piano, just trying to work out songs that are in different languages. It's a real sense of achievement if I can work it out. And, you know, I've done it before and posted it online. And although my, my pronunciation might not be perfect, uh, I was getting encouragement from people that are from Spain or from Serbia or from Greece and saying, you know, this sounds great. And it was just such an amazing feeling. And I just felt like Spanish felt right for, the, for Electrify, but I still have that goal in mind to be able to, you know, sing it in different languages in the future. Yeah, a, a full-on EP. That sounds like a, a great idea. Different languages, yeah. Um, yeah. Thinking of the staging for the track, I know you probably can't say too much because, you know, you'll get in trouble. But um, what, what are your thoughts? Have you kind of got it all mapped out? Costumes, um, sort of lighting, things like that? Yeah, yeah. We've gotten to that point where it's all kind of coming to a head now and uh, it's coming together. Um, I want it to be electric, Pardon the pun. I want it to be electrifying. Um, but, yeah, I just it's, high, it's a high-energy song. I just want to enjoy myself. I want it to be authentic on stage. I want people to, to just know how I perform and who I am while I'm up there. And, yeah, you know, there's going to be a bit of movement in there and there's going to be, I don't know how much I can say to you, but all I'm going to say is there's some surprises in store. That's it. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I'm not going to probe too much further, but I am excited. Yeah. Um, thinking of your kind of like preparation, is it more sort of physical? Because obviously you mentioned it's a, it's a high energy song. Uh, does that mean it's more sort of a physical fitness or is it a kind of a mental preparation that you need to do? I think it's both really. Um, it's an interest, interesting that you say that, you know, going through this process, I feel like people don't fully understand how much goes into it behind the scenes, you know, and, and even myself, you know, I, I didn't know exactly what I would be doing getting into this, uh, this Eurovision process. And, you know, it's been overwhelming at times, but ultimately it's been absolutely fantastic. It's so amazing and, and it's been pushing me. It's really has been pushing me. So in terms of the performance, you know, it's mental, it's physical, it's a bit of everything, you know, I'm not just going to be standing on one spot on the stage. I'm moving around, I'm interacting, I'm, I'm doing my thing and yeah but definitely mentally you know you always have to psych yourself up self up as an artist and get in the zone and you know it's amazing so much preparation for three minutes three minutes of performing and, and it kind of blows my mind as well when you put it in that perspective that I'm going to be up on that stage for three minutes you know um, but there's just countless hours of preparation and and multiple things that you have to do as an artist to prepare yourself for these types of moments but I think the biggest thing for me is just to enjoy it you know to have fun this is this is a dream of mine. Performing is a dream of mine. Um, you know, just getting up there and, and doing what I love. You know, music is my passion. This is my passion. So I guess I'm just trying not to overthink it. And I'm trying to just get into a headspace where it's like, I get to do something that I absolutely love. So it's pretty good. <laughs> I think that sounds like the right, right way to go. Don't overthink it. The more you overanalyze these things, I think it can kind of play on your mind and uh, throw you off. How do you kind of manage that energy of coming off stage with the noise, the, the high, the excitement, so then not being on stage? Is that not quite an extreme adjustment? I think, you know, depending on how I perform, I just want to walk off that stage with a huge smile on my face being saying to myself, you know, I, I gave it everything and I'm really happy and I'm proud of myself. You know, I think that's the euphoric feeling. Um, although the feeling that, one of us 11 artists will get 
when our name gets called out for, to represent the country, that's one of the most amazing feelings that I think anyone could ever feel. But, you know, as I mentioned, it's about having fun. It's about getting up there and being myself and being ourselves uh, as all the artists and, um, and just getting off the stage and being proud of what you've done. I think that's the, the most exciting thing. And, you know, I, don't, I can't speak for everyone, but when I do something, you know, on this level, if I go out there and perform and I'm happy, I just get to, you know, I've done it now and I get to relax. I get to watch all these other amazing artists do their thing and watch everyone else's performance. And, you know, it's this sense of, uh, you just feel so relaxed after you've done it because there's such a big build up. There's so much energy, there's nerves, there's adrenaline, everything's going through your head. And then you kind of just get in there and get into the zone and do your thing, do the performance, you walk off and it's like you come back down to earth, it's done. I get to relax and enjoy what's to come. So yeah, it's a very, uh, very crazy feeling. It's quite difficult to, to explain. Um, you mentioned obviously getting the chance to come off stage and then enjoy the rest of the show. Is there anyone that you may be listening to their tracks at the moment and you're thinking, okay, they're maybe one to watch? I think everyone's one to watch, really. I've listened to everyone. Um, I think everyone's fantastic. They're all so talented. Um, and, you know, I, I must say, I'm not, I'm not going into this with the mindset of, you know, like a UFC fighter or I'm going to win. No, that's, that's, not what, that's not where my head's at here. I think everyone's so talented and amazing in their own right. We're all doing the same thing. We're all going through the same process right now. You know, we're writing music, releasing it and preparing to do this show. And I think it's just all a great platform for every single one of us, you know. Um, and I'm just excited to meet everyone, really. And whoever it is that gets chosen, you know, I give all my props to them. You know, we don't, I don't know. I don't think that there's anyone that oh, is standing out for me. I just think everyone's amazing and I have no clue what could happen. So, you know, it really is anyone's game. Everyone's so talented that's getting up on this stage. So I'm just excited to, to go out there and we can all smash it. Like that's the great thing to watch about it. It's such a diverse lineup and there really is something for everyone. It sounds like a cliche, but there actually is. Um, and I mean, I think as a, a Brit, it's quite difficult to watch that sometimes because we have been doing it for so long and we are now kind of really not doing well in the contest. So to see Australia come in and just show you how it's done, it's, it's kind of part inspirational, part, you know, part hitting. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's such a good lineup. And I can, I can understand that sense of wanting everyone to do well because it's, it's a celebration of music at the end of the day. Exactly. Um, did you listen to any Eurovision bangers to get, you, get yourself in the mood? Um, is there any ones that kind of stand out for you? million percent i've been i've been on my eurovision playlist for a while now you know just getting psyched up of course you know if i think that if i were to win and i were to represent my country i would listen to only eurovision songs until it actually happens to your home but, you know there's so many i can say I, I was extremely impressed with italy last year i must say they're just absolutely fantastic you know so much charisma the performance was flawless the song is fantastic I loved it. I've, I've listened to that a million times. Um, really impressed with the Netherlands 2019 with Arcade. Fantastic song. And then we're throwing it back to Greece. Helena Paparizou when she won with her song My Number One. You know, that was a real proud moment for myself as a Greek Cypriot Australian. And I know that is for many of us. Um, you know, I can never forget that song. Played in the house every single year without fail. <laughs> Um, I've said this multiple times uh, online as well and, and in interviews, but 2007 Molitva when Serbia won, Maria Sedifovic yeah. sang. And that is a real standout for me in terms of Eurovision. That song is just so fantastic in my opinion. I don't understand a word she's saying, but I feel every single yeah, word she says. it still speaks to you. Oh, it speaks to me so much and you know I went and learned that song I learned how to sing it in Serbian and I went to understand the song and you know that's the power of what, what Eurovision can do you know it brings people together around the world and and that's exactly why I'm going into this Australia Decides um, show with the mentality that I have that this is bringing musicians together it's bringing the Australian public and people around the world together. You know, I think that's the attitude that I'm going in with here. So I could honestly name a million songs for you, but there's so many, there's so, so many. Um, thinking back to your own music, um, 
I would love to just go through your kind of three main singles and just get your thoughts on them and kind of what they mean to you. So yeah. starting with Throne. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Throne. Yes, I was very, uh, so Throne's a song that is about visualizing what you, what you want in life, you know, um, and not letting anyone get in the way of that because life's full of setbacks, life's full of, full of ups and downs. But Throne's a song that, that the message that I want to give to people is that, you know, you can visualize yourself on your throne, you know, you can visualize where you want to be. And I think, you know, it was an important first single for myself because, I, I want to visualize where I want to be one day. You know, if Eurovision gives me the platform to do that, then I'll, I'll be eternally grateful. But if it doesn't this time around, um, you know, something else will, and I'll just keep plugging away and doing my thing. So yeah, the throne's an important one in the mix. And then obviously confidence thematically leads on from that, I guess. Yes. Yeah, so confidence is about, it's also about when someone brings you out of your shell and makes you feel confident makes you kind of elevate your feelings um so sticking along those lines there but it's also about your own confidence too you know how you feel and it's important to be confident and be proud of who you are and proud of how far you've come because i feel like a lot of people just think about the future including myself i'm always thinking about the future and then sometimes i need to come back down to earth and think okay what about right now and what about what's happened in the past you know you have to look back at that and, and be proud of where you've come so that's where confidence comes in and then Lemonade, most recent? Lemonade, yes. Lemonade is one of my personal favourites. Um, I, I wrote it with two great friends of mine and it was such a fantastic feeling in, uh, in the studio. Um, and it's about taking something that's a bit of past and making it sweet. That's what it's about. So that's where I use Lemonade, you know. Forget the bitter taste, now we've got the Lemonade because we've turned something that was bitter, you know, not a great time in, in your life and you've turned that around and turned it into something sweet. So that's something that, I, you know, I hopefully I could always do with all, all different aspects of life and I hopefully everyone else can too. So, yeah. And do you think the plan is to kind of put these on an album or do you prefer a more kind of singles-based approach? At the moment, we're definitely doing the singles approach. Um, an album is definitely on the cards for the future. I'm not too sure about the... the you know the details about that so i can't give it to you right now but yeah an album will definitely come in the future my plan is just to keep releasing music keep doing my thing and keep enjoying writing music it's probably one of the most fun parts of being a musician when you walk out of that studio and you're proud of something that you've written you know you're creating your own art form so the album's in the near future amazing um i would love to know what is your best unheard song a song that maybe hasn't been released yet that you have kind of kept aside that you're thinking this is going to be great when it's out there right that's a very 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 difficult question i have many many songs that i've written um many many songs look i can't give you one i can't give you one that's like this is the one that i'm super excited about but there is a song that i wrote recently with a very good friend of mine cameron robertson and it was called Fade Away. And that really stuck out to me. I like that one at the moment. But I go through modes. I go through different phases. Sometimes things scream out to me more than they do, depending on the time, but depending on my mood. So who knows what's next to come? <laughs> okay. Um, Favourite place to visit in Europe? Well, I've only ever been to London okay. in Europe. So I would absolutely love to just travel all of Europe. That is my goal. Um, I would love to perform in all of Europe. The biggest goal of mine is for music to take me around the world and take me through Europe. So I can't give you a favorite place to travel yet as I've only been to one place, but I definitely want to want to visit where I'm, where my family's from, you know, where my grandparents are from in Greece and Cyprus. I would just love to see that and feel that sense of home on the other side of the world, if that makes sense. And then, you know, travel the rest of Europe and, and just see all the beauty that it has to offer because it really is beautiful from what I can see. So I'm excited for when that day comes. Cyprus is, is one of my favourite places. It really is such a nice country to visit. Um, I used to have friends that lived there. They worked at the, the, like the British military base. Um, and uh, they moved back to the UK, which was the most devastating moment of my life because that, that, was, my, that was my holiday home. Um, oh, no. Oh, now you've got me excited. I just want to go. Oh, I mean, it was selfish. They should not have moved back. Um, <laughs> thinking of Australia, this is a place that I would love to visit but have never had the chance. Where would you recommend as kind of must-see places in Australia? 
in Australia, I'm from Sydney. I think Sydney is absolutely beautiful. You know, there's so much to see here. You've got the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge, which is, you know, everyone knows about. And then, of course, the beaches. But honestly, Australia is such a beautiful country. I haven't been everywhere in Australia. I would love to go. But, you know, I've been to Melbourne. I've been to Queensland. Queensland's beautiful. I, I loved going to Noosa. Noosa is a, a place in the Sunshine Coast. Um, and yeah, my family went there for years and years and years. We always used to go to Noosa and it, it's a place that has a special place in my heart. So Noosa is a place to go. As I mentioned, all the beaches here in Sydney and the things to see, there's so much to do. I love, I love my home. I really do. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, you need to win Eurovision for us, and then there's there's a case to go to go to Australia. Um, exactly. So we know you can sing, we know you can write. What is your secret talent? Is there anything that people would be like quite shocked to find out that you can do? Secret talent. Okay. Well, I I used to play basketball for Sydney, <laughs> so but I love basketball. I'm, I keep up to date with the NBA and with basketball all around the world all the time. So that's a bit of a talent of mine, you know. Um, I would say basketball. I'm a huge, uh, I love gaming. I love, love gaming. I'm pretty good at it, I would say. I'm not a professional. Um, and, yeah, it's hard to think off the top of my head. Piano, I mean, but everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. Oh, actually, no. I am going to tell you a secret talent. I figured it out. I mentioned gaming. Have you ever heard of the game Guitar Hero? Yes, yeah. Classic. I, I have beaten every single Guitar Hero game ever made on the hardest um, on the hardest uh, difficulty. That's impressive. So that is uh, that is my secret talent. When I was a kid, Guitar Hero was my life. I loved it so much. It was oh, I, it's <laughs> and also this is funny because Guitar Hero is like this, and you're yeah. clicking the button. It actually translates so much to piano. Mm -hmm. So Guitar Hero has helped me with piano and my finger speed, which is something that's a little fun fact for everyone. So, I mean, you need to be sending money to Sony or whoever it is that makes Guitar Hero. They are, they're responsible for this. <laughs> they are. Honestly, they need to come out with, because it's, it's a retro game now. It's, it's, yeah. it's old. Um, I would love to see like a remaster. Yeah. I would be all over it. Oh, I'd be playing it every five seconds. Um, I would love to finish up with just a quick fire question round. So first thing that pops into your head, um, yeah. So favorite movie? Avengers: Infinity War. Nice. Um, favorite superhero then? Thor. Thor. Um, what's the one thing that you own but you should really throw out? Um, I don't think I should throw anything out that I own. To be honest uh, with you, I have many. Sorry, I know it's a quick fire question, but I have many replicas <laughs> from Marvel movies, but yeah. they're never getting thrown out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's probably like quite a good like life savings thing. Keep them yeah. safe. Um, scariest animal? Scariest animal? Um, I would say an orca or a killer whale. Yeah, yeah. Scary. Um, most people kind of go with the obvious snake, spiders, but I think orca is like, that's a proper realistic fear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sweet or savoury? At the moment, savoury. Savoury, okay. Um, worst habit? Worst habit would be losing my keys. Mm -hmm. I'm always losing them. The most starstruck you've ever been? Most starstruck I've ever been. That's tough. Probably when I met Rita Ora. Um, favorite smell? That's a weird one. Favorite smell um, at the moment is one million. The the new one million Paco Rabanne fragrance. I absolutely love it. See that that's a nice answer. Yeah, a, a lot of people kind of go down a strange route with that one. Um, <laughs> what is one song that you would listen to for the rest of your life? One song that I'll listen to for the rest of my life is, ah, uh, it would have to be, it's a song called Your Love by Kate Lynn. Uh, it's a song from Romania. She's a okay. Romanian. And I've been listening to it every single day for like forever. So I'll listen to that forever. I love it. I think you missed a plug for Electrify there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and lastly, the most used app on your phone. Most used app on my phone would be 
it's it's a toss up between TikTok, Instagram, and NBA fantasy. Okay, <laughs> good range. Um, well, thank you so much. It's been lovely chatting to you, and I really do. I mean, it with all my heart. I do. I do love Electrify, and I I'm sure it's going to do really well, and people will love it. Thank you so much, Andrew. I really appreciate it, and thank you for having me today. No problem. Lovely chatting. Speak to you later. Bye-bye.